Squatch, squatch, show me where you at. Your motivation guy is back. Your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Man, I'm so excited. You know, one of the most efficient forms of controls in competitive gaming is keyboard and mouse. So knowing how to use them properly can take you so far. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to give you guys a pretty interesting crash course that's going to get you ready to start grinding as well as some tips to take your skills even further once you get used to it. So what are we waiting for? It's time to sit back, relax, and get some of my favorite candy. What is it, y'all? Come on, it's that bunch of crunch. Y'all, let's get this going. So if you guys want to start to become a pro, one of the most important things that you need in your arsenal is a smooth control scheme. More importantly, you need one that you can customize specifically to your own needs. After all, I mean, if you're comfortable with your controls, then you're going to have an easier time performing actions in the middle of a match. This is why so many players gravitate towards a keyboard and mouse setup. You know, there are so many keys to work with and it helps them become faster and more precise players, which is exactly what you need in such a fast paced game like Fortnite. Some of you may already be using this setup while others might be coming from console where you've grown accustomed to using controllers. Okay, let me ask you this. You guys want to learn how to use your new setup like a pro? Then click on the link below to visit ProGuys.com. There, you can hone or refine your skills as a Fortnite player by training with our pro-level coaches, learning new techniques, master your game plan, and become the pro that you always dreamed of becoming. All right, so let's talk about these in turn, shall we? Okay, your keyboard is going to be your main arsenal. Everything from movement and building and switching weapons quickly is going to rely on you, you know, to really master your keyboard. The first step towards this mastery is going to be setting up your keybind. So let's go over some of it briefly. First of all, all right, know that the best inventory keybinds are going to be one, two, three, and four, and five for your loadout. You're also going to want to set it so that, you know, specific items automatically go towards specific slots when you pick them up. Okay, so think medium range weapon and short range weapon for your one and two slots. Slot number three can be a sniper utility item. Reserve slot four and five for healing items with an emphasis on five always being healing, all right? If you guys want your loadout to be easily accessible, then start making a habit of just memorizing the position of these keys. Master this, you're gonna find that switching from item one to item three, it's gonna be just so much more direct than just strolling through your inventory one by one. Okay, so if you wanna perfect the art of building, you're gonna wanna break away from the default a bit, all right? Like Q should always be wall while E should be stairs. With these two accessible from your left hand, you're gonna be able to set up quick blocks as well as just start scaling upwards. Floors and roofs though, you might wanna consider putting them on your mouse hand. This means less finger movements to get everything set up, but it also means quicker builds when you got two hands managing the job. Okay, so now since we're on the topic, let's talk about our mouse a little bit. Okay, so this is gonna be used to perform tasks such as aiming and firing and changing direction so you can face, you know, threats head on. This is possibly like one of the most important aspects of Fortnite and optimizing your mouse settings so that they fit your own play style is going to help you make waves in competitive. Okay, here's a question that you might not be familiar with. Okay, are you all arms or all wrists? Or more specifically, for those of you who may not be familiar, when you move your mouse, do you move your arm or does your wrist also move the movement? The answer to this question is gonna determine the kind of player that you are and what settings that you should be using to make the most out of this. Okay, so if you play mostly with your arm, then you're gonna wanna just ample space in your mouse pad to make those movements. The last thing that you guys want is to try moving and your mouse gets caught or just reaches the end of the pad. You know, one thing that you should do is adjust your mouse sensitivity. A player who uses the arm to aim has more space for movement. So having a higher sensitivity is gonna have you just spinning in circles, unable to see what you're doing. If you play with your arm, consider a lower sensitivity. Okay, so when playing with your wrist, you can make snap your movements, which is great for, you know, when you need to just tackle enemies that are just trying to jump you or make really fast edits. This is also really good for players with less space. You're going to want a higher sensitivity so you can just make a clean 180 while just only having to move your mouse slightly. And most of the time, I mean, you can tell what kind of player you are based on what you gravitate towards. Some of you guys are going to automatically use your wrist and others are going to use their arms by default. Next, okay, you're going to want to make sure that you use as many of your mouse fingers as possible. Your keyboard hand is going to do plenty on that button pressing, but using your mouse hand for other functions can free up time and space on your keyboard. You're going to want to take advantage of just your scroll wheel, as well as any buttons you have on the side. Preferably, your mouse should have at least two, you know, mappable buttons on the side for your thumb to use, but just try not to go overboard with them either. Even if you have a big MMO mouse, using too many key minds can become frustrating. You know, one key detail that you need to keep in mind when learning how to play using a mouse is that auto aim is off. For those of you already using mouse controls, 
moves, then you just need to practice your aim. But you know, for those of you coming in from controller, it's time to just wing yourself off of auto aim, which might take slightly longer. Auto aim is a default setting which helps controller players keep up with the precision of the mouse. You know, you might notice that hitting your targets is going to be somewhat more difficult than usual at times. You might even think that you suck with these controls. But don't get discouraged, guys. It's everything is new at first, but you gotta keep going. Like if you're having these troubles, hit creative and just try those aim training courses as well as team deathmatch modes. Really, really help. Focus on tracking your opponent and just keeping your crosshair at an optimal position so you can easily snap into the direction you need to. Okay, now for the question of the day. Bunch of me, here we go. What's your current setup? Tell us all about the gear that you use on your journey to become a pro. Leave your responses in the comments section below. Okay, so now that you know what to expect from your mouse and keyboard setup, let's talk about some alternatives that you need to look into for a more customized experience. Okay, so we talked about this a bit before when we were going over, you know, how to set up your equipment, but let's just go over a few additional things. So there are so many different types of players, right? In the same vein, there are many different types of gaming mice and keyboards that you can use to really up your game. So let's start with the mouse. Preferably, like we want you to really have as many options in terms of buttons, but we also don't want you to feel overwhelmed either. Like we mentioned, earlier a good rule is to really have two extra buttons on your mouse so that you can just keep on them you know the buttons aren't the only important trade to really look into however the buttons aren't the only important trade to look into when choosing your equipment the weight of the gaming mouse also comes into play you know lighter ones tend to be used for quicker movement and require less effort to move however although it seems like lighter is always better there are pro players that break that mold just look at mongrel who uses a heavier mouse but compensates for it with his arm movements and he hits more aggressive play style okay so keyboards also come in many shapes and sizes. Some take up more space while others are more compact. If you're an arm player, then consider getting a more you know compact keyboard since this is going to save room for you to have more arm space for your mouse. A compact keyboard is going to remove excessive clutter from buttons that you don't necessarily need. So take this even further with half keyboards that cut down even more buttons but keep the ones most frequently used by competitive gamers. If all else isn't to your liking, like you know you could also build the habit of just tilting your keyboard which is something some pros that just Tifo do either for comfort or for for more from our space. Okay, so let's put this all together. Even a play with the right setup is doomed to fail unless they practice every day and work on the muscle memory. This is why it is so important to experiment with your new controls before really deciding on what to keep and really what to change. You know, while it may be tempting to swap your keybinds and sense, you know, whenever you hit a roadblock, you should try to limit this if you're trying to develop the muscle memory. So keep practicing, that muscle memory is gonna come to you, I'm telling you. You should also look to really master double movement, which allows you to look in different directions without slowing down. You know, without double movement, you might be able to survive your early and mid games, but your end games are where double movement becomes a necessity. Like with so much action happening around you, you're gonna wanna keep an eye on your opponents, but also you wanna have an easier time moving so you can just keep up with the storm. And this is where double movement makes it easier. You know, up until, you know, recently, double movement was something that was easier with controllers due to how sticks work. Luckily, PC gamers can still emulate these movement styles using programs such as Wooting or Keys 2SX. You know, macros like these came under controversy a while Back. However, it was confirmed by Epic that using them to emulate double movements is legal. But keep in mind that configuring your keybinds to do multiple actions at once is still illegal. So, you know, placing down multiple bills all at once, you know, with the press of a single button is a big no-no. All right, before we wrap things up for today, don't forget to visit ProGuys.com and find out how you can supercharge your skills. But you show me where you watch your motivation guys back. Connect with my Instagram at your motivation guy. Hope you guys like the video. Subscribe to the channel and uh, man, make sure to spread the word man we have a lot of great content coming out we're you know changing a few things man and make it dope and uh just just make it better and better really so i'm excited about that remember you know master your controls and you're well on your way to becoming a very skilled player and so uh man keep being persistent you know don't give up keep taking it to the next level hey we'll see you on the next one peace